This morning from Newtown, Connecticut, a special edition of This Week. <laughs> Tragedy at the okay, elementary yeah, school. Yeah. Everything was just normal and then it all just changed. 27 killed most in the first grade. She is an incredible person. And I'm so blessed to be her dad. Evil visited this community today. Evil met by bravery. I said there are bad guys out there now. We need to wait for the good guy. This morning, we remember those lost. They had their entire lives ahead of them. Birthdays, graduations, weddings. And ask why. This was not God's plan. This was a, a man who has serious issues in his life. And now, as America grieves, how should our leaders respond? What can all of us do to stop this senseless violence? We will find a way to heal. We'll get to the heart of those questions right now. From ABC News, this is a special edition of This Week with George Stephanopoulos. Tragedy at the elementary school. Reporting from Newtown, Connecticut, George Stephanopoulos. And good morning from the library at Newtown Middle School. This is where the 20 children killed at Sandy Hook Elementary would have continued to learn and grow. Just down the road from Newtown High School, where President Obama will come tonight to comfort the families, thank the first responders, and console a community still in shock. The heartbreak here is magnified by the age of almost all the victims, little children, six and seven years old, all in just the first grade. Overnight, the shooter's father, Peter Lanza, released his first public statement. We are in a state of disbelief and trying to find whatever answers we can. We too are asking why. And this morning, America is honoring the victims. Today, every NFL team will observe a moment of silence before the games. The Giants and Patriots will wear special decals on their helmets. Our guests and experts are standing by for a conversation about what happened and why. To discuss what it means to take meaningful action, that's President Obama's phrase, and to reason about a shattering moment of mindlessness. We begin with the latest on the investigation. With me now, Brian Ross, our chief investigative correspondent. And Brian, investigators are beginning to piece together what happened in that terrifying 10 minutes in the school. That's right, George. They say they are making good progress in knowing much of the how, although less of the why of the stunning crime. Uh, in particular, they are focusing on the weapons used. There were three weapons recovered, two handguns and a semi-automatic assault-style rifle that the authorities believe was owned actually by Adam Lanza's mother, Nancy. Her friends say she was a gun enthusiast who bought the weapons for self-defense when she was divorced and lived in a large home by herself and often took her sons, her friends say, uh, to a nearby firing range for target practice. So they, they confirmed that the weapons belonged to her, but there had also been some reports, at least one report, I believe, in the L.A. Times, uh, that the shooter may have tried to buy a weapon recently. Our reporting doesn't confirm that, and, and the fact is, in Connecticut, there is a waiting period uh, to buy any weapon. Uh, you need a permit to buy a handgun, not a long rifle, but even so, there's a waiting period. And uh, if there was an attempt to buy one in a short period of time, that wouldn't work. There had also been some information earlier that the shooter's mom may have had some connection to Sandy Hook, may have been a substitute teacher or a volunteer, that the, but the superintendent has now said that is not the case. So do we have any better idea of why Adam Lanza chose this school? Well, the superintendent has said that the mother, Nancy Lanza, did not work there. She was not a teacher. But her relatives say she did volunteer as a teacher's aide at Sandy Hook, apparently around the same time that Adam was a student there. Uh, he was a troubled young man, according to friends. And according to relatives, Nancy had many issues with the school district about how they were treating him and handling his particular special needs. So that may have been a source of conflict. And at one point, according to the aunt of uh, Adam, uh, the mother pulled Adam out of the public school system and homeschooled him because of her unhappiness with the way he was being treated at school. And the, the police also spent an awful lot of time at that at the home, which is also a crime scene, of course, where the mother uh, was murdered. What else have they been able to find inside that home? Well, they say they have made good progress uh, from evidence found in the home, unspecified, as to the why and the motive. Uh, we don't know if that means there was a node or some sort of a video left, but they say they are making progress in determining a motive here that was involved in which, you know, he started the day by shooting his mother and then drove about 10 minutes 
uh, to the school. So he had a very determined mission uh, in his head uh, when he started that day Friday. I saw one report that the hard drive, his, the hard drive of his computer at the home had been broken. Is that true? We haven't been able to confirm that. There have been a number of reports. It's hard to know. Police are, they say, purposely keeping a lot of these things close to the vest as they put together a full picture. Uh, the best information really about uh, Adam and, and his background comes from former classmates who attended school with him and say he was awkward and socially uh, very Ill, Ill at ease around people, didn't like to be talked to. Uh, he was a member of the tech club at his high school. Uh, friends say he was very bright, very smart, but very withdrawn. But the mystery is still why he did this. That, that remains a, a serious question. Uh, there seems to be some connection, at least in his twisted way of thinking, that uh, put him on that path. But it's not certain yet just what that was, George. Okay, Brian Ross, thanks very much. And as we said earlier, so many Americans joining in to honor and remember those lost on Friday and this whole community. On Saturday Night Live last night, a children's choir sang Silent Night. And here in Newtown, a continuous vigil as the community comes together in tears and prayer. ABC's Juju Chang is at St. Rose of Lima Church this morning. Good morning, Juju. Good morning to you, George. The second mass is already underway here at St. Rose, and the outpouring of grief is so staggering. State troopers are having to control the flow of traffic. People are coming together to express condolences, come together as a community, and to ponder those questions to which there are never easy answers, like how does a gunman slaughter such innocence? All this while more photos, more images are emerging of lives Eric, what is cut shot? short, snapshots, if you will. There are 20 children who died in in those two classrooms at Sandy Hook. All were just six or seven years old. And of those kids, nine of them left behind siblings. Robbie Parker, who's the father of one of those children, spoke poignantly right here at St. Rose Church about his daughter, Emily. She left behind two grieving parents and two little sisters. She was an exceptional artist. And she always carried around her markers and pencils so that she never missed an opportunity to draw a picture or make a card. Emily was a mentor to her two little sisters and delighting in teaching them how to read, dance, and find the simple joys in life. And of the six adults who died at that school, we're also hearing about acts of heroism. We know the principal died after she went to go and confront the gunman. We've heard of one teacher, Vicki Soto, who shielded some of her children by putting them, hiding them in a closet, and then by protecting the other children, literally with her body, she lost her life that day. Monsignor Robert Weiss, who's the priest here, has been planning funerals for his congregants. We learned a short time ago from church officials that there will be eight funerals here for eight children, eight families devastated, but it's not just this church. There are houses of worship around this community that are comforting those who have lost their innocence in a way here. There are makeshift memorials popping up, not just with candles and flowers, but with childlike objects, with a soccer ball signed from the Newtown Soccer Club, or little teddy bears that a child six or seven would take to bed, and signs that say, hug a teacher today or sleep in heavenly peace. There are four masses, George, planned at this church today. And one fa sad final footnote, on each and every one of those aisles is a box of Kleenex on either side, waiting for the outpouring of tears. George. Mm. Okay, Juju, thanks very much.